Well, well Sean cool. has got me um, singing Passwire with her. Is it? Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know. And she was like, trust me. Hey, peeps, it's your girl, Blessed Diva, Diva, and welcome back to the Blessed Diva, Diva channel. And I'm just smiling and brimming with joy reading or going to get into this story. Yes, this one is about Vibes Cartel and all the undercover Kevin lovers. This is my story about Vibes Cartel. Cartel is not a cult leader. Cartel has never been a cult follower and Gaza Nation is not a cult following throng. You never hear a cartel in a no church a call none with goat. You never hear cartel a sprinkle not nowhere. You never hear cartel a tell if we bring every dollar we we'll have come give him so we we'll get an act together. We are an elite bunch. We're not in a no congregation with Uno. Anyway, people, when we get back, we're going to talk about Vibes Cartel case, the developments. Let's kick it. <laughs> No time for you. Oh, John. Yeah. For my life, he give time. He give time. So let's kick this off with our first topic. Ed Sheeran reveals collaboration with Aishana. A collaboration is in the works between global superstar Ed Sheeran and dancehall artist Aishana. Speculation of a musical project between the pair has been rife in weeks. After Sharon told a radio show that Aishana's Equal Rights is his favorite version of his hit song, Shape of You. What I like about Shape of You is anywhere that I go in the world, people know that song. Yes, an answer. Caribbean, and I heard like a totally different song. It's really, really filthy, but she's just singing about her man going down on her. Sing to it. Because I've listened to it so many times. When she says, if you want Ed my you, you have to suck this. <laughs> In a post to our 844,000 followers on Instagram, Aishana posted another radio interview of Sharon on her Instagram today, where the British pop star said a song is indeed in the works. Well, well Sean cool. has got me um, singing Passwire with her. Is, is it, yeah? Because I was like, I don't know. And she was like, trust me, Kingston slang. Because yeah? I was like, I don't know. And she was like, trust me, Kingston slang. They're going to fucking love it. And so she's <laughs> she's got me. Yeah, she's got me singing. I'm actually going to record my bits after this. That's what they're hurrying me up. Oh, okay. got go. The clip is from a Chucky online podcast. In the caption of her post, Aishana said she has been keeping the musical collaboration a secret until Sharon made the revelation. She shared her excitement at working with the perfect Thinking Out Loud and A-Team singer. Equal rights stirred controversy in Jamaica for its sexually explicit lyrics referencing oral sex. The subject is taboo in Jamaica. However, the song raised Aishana's brand internationally. The controversy surrounding the hit song turned the 35-year-old into a household name. So there you have it, people. Aishana will be collaborating with Ed Sheeran. And for all the Aishana fans who are excited, you can leave your thoughts now down below in the comment section. But I'm not an Aishana fan and I'm not a hater of Aishana. For music plays, I listen to it. That's about it. Now on to the core of our discussion. Vibes Cartel. The bombshell testimony that Vibes Cartel had ordered murder hits on three persons from behind bars may have already placed the notorious entertainer on the police radar for investigation before it was made public, a senior police officer has signaled. But it is unclear whether the declarations may figure in consideration of future prosecution of Vibes Cartel for other crimes. Head of the Criminal Investigations, CIB branch, Assistant Commissioner of Police, ACP, Clinton Lang, said that the police would naturally have been following up on any such statement that a witness makes in court. The prosecution's second witness in the Klansman One Don Gang trial made the revelation in Home Circuit Court last week. In a Gleaner interview with Leng, said that if a witness gave such a testimony, it was likely that he or she would have given that in a statement before an investigation was being carried out. What is reported is that no names were called. That is what was reported. That is why I'm saying it is likely that investigators are already aware, he added. Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, declined to comment on the matter. However, attorney at law Isaac Buchanan, who is seeking to have Cartel's murder conviction overturned at the United Kingdom 
Privy Council said his client had not given him any instruction in relation to claims made by the prosecution's second witness in the Klansman One Don Gang trial. Cartel, whose real name is Adija Palmer, was convicted along with fellow entertainer Sean Storm Campbell, Kaira Jones, and Andre St. John in 2011, August 16, for the disappearance of Clive Lizard Williams in Havendale, St. Andrew. However, Buchanan is of the view that the witness testimony in the Clans Man One Don gang trial was not likely to have any bearing on cartel. Nothing turns on that. We have what is known as snitch culture. People have right to say anything that will get them the least amount of time. Buchanan said a concern that has been pressed home by the defendant's lawyer at the home circuit court. Buchanan said that under the plea agreement law, witnesses will do whatever they need to as a means to get their sentences reduced. Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of National Security, Senator Matthew Samudo, said that he would not comment on the specific claims made against cartel during the gang trial. However, Samuda said he was standing by earlier pronouncements. He and Portfolio Minister Dr. Horace Chang had made that incarcerated gangsters had been calling murder hits on persons from behind bars. We don't need any vindication of validation of what we have said. We are sure that this is indeed the case, that there are persons behind bars who would do everything in their power to continue running their criminal enterprises, which includes maiming and murdering of Jamaicans, Samuda said in a Glena interview late last week. Asked whether the police had been able to press charges against incarcerated persons who gave instructions to their cronies outside to commit crimes. Samuda said, I can't say historically, and we haven't, but I can say investigations are ongoing for persons we know would have triggered criminal acts externally from inside prison. I don't know historically how many would have been charged in the facilities, but I know of ongoing investigations, he maintained. Cartel has apparently beaten correctional oversight to produce dozens of dancehall recordings during his decade in prison. In the most high-profile breach, United States television station Fox 5 aired a two-part interview with the incarcerated artist Vibes Cartel. Samuda revealed last Thursday that a multi-agency probe was unable to ascertain when the interview was done. We can't say on which device. We continue to monitor the space and and those who would have had interaction with him, he said. But in a Gleaner interview in August, Cartel's attorney Buchanan said that the entertainer did the jailhouse interview while he was at St. Catherine-based correctional facility. Those are my instructions. His phone was confiscated and he was moved to one of those nice 55 million state-of-the-art facility at Horizon where they are monitored by the military, Buchanan told the newspaper in August. Samuda said that steps were now being made to tackle the issue and to mitigate the impacts that phones and other devices were having in correctional facilities. Samuda said that in a matter of weeks, the government will take legislation to parliament to make it a criminal offense for persons to provide phones to convicted offenders. I just saw what I hope to be the final draft. It will go to the National Security Council and Cabinet for approval. The Cabinet Minister noted that he made the commitment sometime mid last year and was now on the last lap to complete the draft law. Samuda made it clear that the proposed new law would punish both those who smuggle phones and other contraband into the correctional facilities. He said that the authorities had step up searches in correctional facilities, confiscating more than 2,000 items over the last 12 months, up from 1,200 for the corresponding period the year before. We are going to throw the bodies at the problem until we have Technology, Samuda said. He also said that appropriate scanners, phone jammers, and cameras would be installed across the correctional facilities. There you have it, people. So you got a bit of everything. They touched on the case. Um, Vibes Cartel lawyer has clearly spoken and corroborated what I said before, that these 
cases or these claims don't really have any bearing on Vibes Cartel's Privy Council case. So I'm going to say this much to you again, Gaza Nation. Anybody who is out there telling you this and telling you that the Privy Council case is separate and different from what the one other gang informant has thrown out there now whether they want to call him an informant or not it is the reality now back to what isaac has said any person on trial will do anything to reduce their sentence and that is a fact anyway people tell me your thoughts on down below in the comment section as per usual we'll have a discussion if you've not yet subscribed to my channel please hit notification bell if you've not yet smashed the like button on this video smash the like button and send this out i'm out